Hello again, audience, be you existent or no, and welcome back to the Great Partition in Europa Universe House 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and I'm just gonna jump in and say Nitra's at war. Nitra has three of its provinces occupied by Mazovia. Looks like Poland might have struck again. That would be the Polish reconquest of Chelno. So Poland having integrated with Lithuania, looking to test its strength again. Is Brandenburg involved in this war? They are. But, well, last time we saw a pretty decent uh, Space marine stack of theirs running around. Not seeing that this time. Looks like Bavaria might be involved in this. Yeah, and that's that's a lot of people on uh, on their side. Mazovia, Gotland, Saxony, Brandenburg, Ansbach, and Friesland. But I can't help but wonder, with a... Well, you know, again, I'm not, not seeing a big army on Brandenburg's part. And, uh, we don't have a big Condottieri Lubick stack in there helping out. <laughs> so I jumped into that completely skipping the recap. Uh, really, it was somewhat of a quieter episode last time, all things considered. Uh, we did see Venice at war with a lot of people in the Adriatic, including Serbia. Uh, but now we see a lot of tags released in this area. Uh, we see Epirus with Epirus itself, Epirus a vassal of Venice. We see Ragusa out, and a vassal of Venice. So, it seems that Venice just trying to, uh, I guess trying to just get vassals. Byzantium, still alive. They weren't taken in that war, so good for them. But, uh, really, I'm just, I'm just not all that sure what to say about that situation. I guess Venice just wanted to release some vassals. Uh, we did see Toulouse ascend to the ranks of Great Powerdom last time. They are still holding on to the 8th spot, though uh, Poland integrating Lithuania has catapulted them up back into the Great Power ranks. Welcome once again to them. The man looks up there as well, taking those provinces from Lebanon. But anyways, uh, they have usurped the Great Powerdom from their uh, neighbor there in Gascony. The French area is still uneasily partitioned between these uh, French tags. Brittany and Austria, with a couple miners in there for flavor. Also did see Kasim get pretty well carved up by Odiev, Russia, uh, and presumably some separatists as well. That would explain Ostrakhan. Theodoro also taking a couple provinces from him and completely encircling the Sea of Azov. Uh, Kaffa and Mantrega belonging to Trebizond, but uh, Theodoro and Trebizond are tight. They're historical friends. Pretty much always allies, unless a player is playing one of them and uh, chooses to ignore that historical friendship. Russia has been at war with Kiva for a while, and doing well despite being really quite outnumbered. Uh, we did see Persia not sending up... I mean, Persia's got a significant 25 stack up here, but the majority of its army sitting at home. Uh, Kiva also helped out by Delhi, who sent up a pretty decent sized stack, and uh, Kiva's army itself, I saw them around recently. Not seeing him right now, though. Over in the east, Wu still the emperor, and with zero mandate. Despite that, we, they still won a war against Xi earlier. Took a fair bit of uh, land going into Central Asia, or Central China. And uh, now at war with Liang. So, no mandate, no problem for Wu. The former Emperor Yan has done quite a bit of expansion up north, have taken over most of Jin. Uh, Korshin has also expanded with their help, and uh, Yan now going after Korea. Korea, another one of those that was formerly a great power, but uh, honestly, losing the mandate was the best thing that could have happened to Yan. Uh, we saw them really get crushed in one of those wars earlier. They were reduced to only a few provinces, one of them still being Beijing. Still a great province, 35 development. But uh, really, since that, Yan has gone and taken advantage of its destiny once again. There was a massive war happening down here in Southeast Asia, and uh, that was a coalition war against Bengal. From the territorial gains over here, I'd say Bengal, Delhi, and uh, I believe it was Tibet, also on their side, won that. But were vastly weakened as now Bengal contending with the might of Bahmanis. That's enough for now, let's go ahead and start her up again. And, uh, again, the war up here in Poland being one of the more interesting ones, though we do see Venice at war with some of the Turkish Beyliks. 
Mentessa, Kandar, and Aretna all fighting Venice. I'm guessing uh, Venice might have initiated this one. That would be the Venetian conquest of Adirne. So, uh, the Ottomans not being in this area definitely means Venice has taken advantage. Though, odd how they chose to release all of these as vassals. We now see even Montenegro being spat out by Venice. Uh, they, they've got to have far too many diplomatic relations at this point. Uh, we do see, is Croatia also a vassal? No? We just see so much land going to Croatia. Is the Venetian ruler... The Venetian ruler is a conqueror, which would certainly explain uh, if they managed to, say, get a coalition against them. But uh, not seeing one of those. No, they just have five vassals and two allies. You know, for a naval power like Venice, that can't be uh, nice, considering, you know, Diplo points are used for uh, for naval things. But hey, that's their choice, and again, this is in 1.20, which does still have that glitch, uh, where the AI likes to uh, hold on to far, far more diplomatic relations than is healthy. I was mistaken, I thought Nitra had taken Tirgavista and Buzal, but instead Odiev has. Odiev, not holding on to the biggest of armies, not all of this land is that rich, but uh, again, continuing to expand, continuing to do well for itself. They have granted Nitra access, allows them to go over here and siege back these from Mazovia, and I did see a decent sized Brandenburg stack again, so they built up their army, or perhaps the majority of their army was just off somewhere else. Uh, regardless, Brandenburg fully involved in this war again, still uh, holding on to a personal union over Ansbach. But we do see that uh, a lot of Mazovia's heartland has been sieged down by the Poles, including Warsaw. I mean, there, there are a lot of forts in this region. Uh, the Teutons start out with a fair bit of this land over here, and I think it's like four forts for nine provinces. Definitely annoying to siege down, especially as Poland in the early game, if you're playing them, because Poland doesn't exactly start out with a navy. It's kind of rough. And even if they did, the Teutons would likely be stronger. Poland deciding to siege down Bels instead. Uh, that does allow the allied Mazovian forces to siege down a lot of these back. Mazovia not having much luck with Ostroda here. Oh my goodness. Failing another 79% chance. I thought that didn't happen to the AI, frankly. <laughs> but they'll get it here pretty soon. Most likely this next tick, if not the one after that. There we go. As for Warsaw, that at 7%. So. Oh, and Poland uh, looking to go ahead and relieve that. Good call there. Squishing the stack there. I believe that was Ansbach's. And uh, holding down the Siege of Bells, looks like Nitra's helping out with 5k of their own men there. Speaking of, where's Nitra's large stack? Nitra holding on to 30,000. Uh, they did split those off to help out with Bells, but now going over to Siege back Mazir. Also a level 2 fort. And uh, Fennis has done well for itself against the Balix over here. We actually see the knights trying to siege down uh, what is usually Coachelli, but renamed to Optimatoi because the Byzantines did take that at one point. Again, the Byzantines still alive, completely surrounded by Venice and her vassals, but uh, Venice is just, just throwing away Diplo points at this point. But likely to take Edirn and possibly Constantinople itself. Don't know if the AI co-belligerence things, but... My word. Karaman has actually taken back some of its land, or perhaps was given some of it back by Persia. Persia no longer involved against Russia. This war over here has ended. No immediately uh, visible territorial gains, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, perhaps Kiva actually gained Jetru? I think it might have been a white piece, though. So, good job by Kiva, Delhi, Persia, standing up against the Russian giant who has instead turned its gaze toward the Uzbeks. The Uzbeks, pretty rough stuff on tech. They are five below Russia. Uh, let's actually check 
The Uzbeks were able to pick up the feudalism and uh, feudalism in the Renaissance, but no luck with colonialism. Russia has actually picked up all of them now, so that has catapulted them up to second rank great power. That's got to help them out against Persia, as Persia, holding on to only Tech 13 despite the numbers parity with Russia. And uh, let's check the institutions on them. So colonialism has made its way into some Persian territory, including up and over to Baghdad, so they'll probably be able to embrace that soon, but uh, the printing press not quite there yet. It is down in Anatolia though, so not too far away from Persian lands. A player likely to take some loans uh, in order to embrace an institution, institutions being eminently important. Jermion has been in the middle of all of this for a long time. They were released, I believe, from Karaman earlier, or perhaps from Saruhan. Uh, now, fighting Mentessa Kandar. And Bulgaria is here again. I thought I'd seen them eaten by, uh, by Kandar, but they are just so stubborn. Very impressed with them. So we do see a Brunswickian army hired by Friesland and Brandenburg trying to siege back Warsaw, neg 29% then, or right now. Uh, Nitra, Poland have taken back Mazir, and really just, Poland is losing to Brandenburg. If that, if, if that alliance between Mazovia and Brandenburg breaks, Mazovia is done, but Brandenburg is protecting them with space marines. <laughs> that is that is what is occurring here. Can't help but wonder what is going to happen to Mentessa and Kandar after this war. Uh, they still have held on to their armies somehow, uh, and are currently trying to siege back some of their forts, including Sinope, or, uh, Kandar's capital in Sinope. But the only things of really either of those nations that are not occupied being Kanak and Trabzon for Kandar. Notably, the fort in Trebizond, or Trabzon, no longer existing for Kandar. I wouldn't call that a great move. It can be difficult to pay for, but uh, that is, again, a coastal mountain province and one of the toughest forts to siege down at any point. The Mamluks also involved up here, sending 40,000 to help out Karaman. Karaman, originally one of the strongest Beyliks in the region, but their alliance chains failed them, and they lost a lot of stuff, first to Syria, now to Persia, uh, some to Mentessa, Iconia, a, or Iconium, a uh, Karamanese core at the start. But they have regained their capital, and they just stayed alive down here, sometimes down to one province in Isel, but they've held on. Mentessa has been removed from that war, or rather they've pieced out Venice, or perhaps more that Venice has pieced them out. Venice has taken Edirne from them, as well as Philibe, Plovdiv, and Kirkelisse from Kandar. So Kandar still in possession of the City of World's Desire, Constantinople, but uh, can't help but wonder how much longer that's going to be a thing. Venice has stormed down here and just taken uh, a lot, not all, but a lot of the Balkans, and released dotted, uh, dotted trading cities and vassals everywhere. The only fellow in this area that's not a Venetian vassal is Byzantium. And uh, Byzantium, still with a Paleologus, but only protected by a truce. As soon as that's done, I think we'll finally see the last remnant of the Roman Empire fall. Though the Holy Roman Empire, not great on imperial authority, but, uh, you know, still a strong entity. <laughs> we do thankfully see that the Protestants have stopped supporting Portugal as emperor. That made me really kind of sad. Instead, have chosen different people. Uh, we see Bohem Bohemia backing Württemberg. 
Brandenburg backing Haino, who exists again. They were eaten earlier, but uh, they're back. And Saxony backing Mazovia, but the Catholics still much preferring the usual emperor in Austria. We do see a lot of people moving around here. Has the League War fired? Nope. We do see the Augsburgian conquest of Ingolstadt. Think Ingolstadt, a yep, Bavarian territory. All of Augsburg occupied by Austria. Can't help but wonder why he'd go for that attack if uh, Austria was going to be protecting Bavaria. Bohemia involved in that war too. Uh, can't say. Seems that that was a pretty aggressive move though. The polish mazovian war is over. Uh, it doesn't look like all that much has changed hands. I think that Poland had retained control of Tuchola even before this. Actually, it appears that Brandenburg has somehow gotten control of Konigsberg. Still allied with Mazovia, so perhaps they chose to sell that province? Yep. Interesting that. So Mazovia, an embezzler, uh, that the ruler personality that allows them to sell provinces, and they have sold Brandenburg Konigsberg in order to pay their debts. I cannot remember all of the provinces that are required to form Prussia, but uh, Brandenburg possibly well on their way. Who knows, maybe Konigsberg was the last one. Russia has cleaned up most of Kasim, Kasim now only existing in Mansur. Pretty easy for anybody to take, though uh, I think Odiev would be the best candidate, as uh, they are in the state of Zaporizhia. Actually, it'd be fine for Theodoro to take him too. That state currently divided between three tags. Russia pretty easily going to easily going to be able to take uh, Ostrakhan. They were released from Kasim earlier. That's another tag that we've seen multiple times. They have pretty uh, persistent separatists. Can see them even in normal games sometimes. But uh, huh. seems that the war between Karaman and Kandar Mentesa is also over. We've seen Aydin be released again. So uh, good for them. And Kandar, sorry, Karaman has taken back Konya, Hamid, and Tekka. Actually, I think Tekka. Uh, more Mentessa's. Uh, I think Mentessa actually starts with Tekka. So uh, that's an outright conquest for them. Still, pretty sure Persia is going to come knocking on Karaman's door here pretty soon. Uh, they are defended by the Mamluks, who managed to take all the way up to and including Antioch when they destroyed Syria. But, uh, yeah. Persia no longer guaranteeing Kiva, which opens the door for Russia, but still allied with Bahmanis. Afghanistan no longer by, protected by Persia either, which means they're likely to fall here pretty soon. Uh, we currently see Nagar going after him. Uh, yeah, alright, so Afghanistan does have an army, though what was 10 is now 1. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Regardless, a lot of this land formerly belonging to Sindh, Nagaur now stepping in, and, uh, yep, there's the peace deal. They have released Marwar, or something along those lines, but have taken a lot of the territory that was formerly Sindhi, now belonging to Nagar. That war between Bengal and uh, Bahmanis coming out heavily in Bahmanis' favor. Uh, a lot of this stuff, formerly under, under Bengal, now under Bahmanis. Are they a great power because of that? They're not. Bahmanis has tried hard, but uh, the institutions keeping them down, they are still not a great power. Persia has embraced colonialism. Still only in fifth place, though, because uh, they need that printing press. But should they embrace that, they would be the second rank great power. The Mamluks also holding on to great powerdom without the Ottomans there to squish them. They've at least held steady, actually taken back what was uh, lost to them in the partition at the start, but, well, they are also right next to Super Persia. Venice still holding on to 8th with all of their Adriatic gains. 
Adriatic, and Balkan. <laughs> we do see uh, Bulgarian separatists originating from Kandar trying to siege down the trading city of the Den. Uh, I don't know if Venice is going to help them out. Regardless, I feel like that almost might be a meme for this. Just... <laughs> Things getting quiet? How about some Bulgarian separatists? Things still quiet after that? How, how about another war between Poland and Mazovia? Speaking of, it seems that Konigsberg and Danzig are blockaded, and by Riga. So Brandenburg at war with Magdeburg, Pomerania, Riga, and Hungary. Uh, usually, Hungary would be a little bit scarier of a tag there, although right now Brandenburg is losing, somehow. Do you see Poland at war again? Oh my lord. Nitrin Venetian Punitive War. Venice managing to make itself the target of the coalition of Crete, Hungary, Nitra, Odiev, and Jermion. But there are a lot of tags involved in that war. I mean, a lot of them are trading cities, but Venice has a massive trading league, even absent all of these. Though uh, we can take a bite of the city of Vidin, which has flipped to the Bulgarians. Bulgarian separatists are the strongest force in this game. <laughs> I mean, it's it's possible that the uh, coalition alliance here could win, but there are just a lot of tags ready to help Venice. I I think that was a bit premature on the war deck there from Nitra. They might have been able to get a few more people into that coalition. I do see Jermion taking down the Knight's army though. And uh, they actually have managed to come under control of Huda Vendigar. Uh, a, another change of tags for that province, uh, presumably given to them by the Mamluks. Or, or I can't remember if they initiated that war against Mentessa or the Mamluks did. Probably them, though uh, the Mamluks could have fabricated on Mentesha from Cyprus. Regardless, Huda Vendigar is Jermion's. <laughs> That's the point. Don't know if we'll see the League War fire. Uh, the Leagues are still drawn up, though it appears that Bohemia has become the Protestant leader. Of course, no changes over here for uh, Austria, the leader of the Catholic League and the Holy Roman Emperor. Just, uh, I don't know. I would love to see this League War fire, but more uh, secular wars have taken up everybody's time and Seems that the AI doesn't like declaring the League War uh, if it looks like it's going to be equal. Kind of uh, hope that's something that Paradox would be willing to change in the future. Make it so that the AI is more willing to declare the League War. The city of Finnmark is only Finnmark again. They have existed up here for quite a while, but they have no diplomacy at all and have only a three development province. Uh, they used to hold on to this territory or this uh, state province here in Anar, but that's gone back to Novgorod. Novgorod has been just, you can't call them lucky. If they were lucky, they'd have beaten Muscovy at the start and you know, they'd be Russia, but they've just, they've not drawn Persia or Persia. Wow. They've not drawn Russia's wrath as nearly as much as they normally do. So, they're sitting over here, mostly in Finland, and, I mean, they are still holding on to provinces like Neva and Ladoga, which are pretty decent, can still field an army of 20k, but they're, they're, they're alive. <laughs> they actually joined the Catholic League. Interesting, that. Unable to rival Russia anymore, but they do have enemies in Denmark, Norway, and Perm. Perm, another semi-surprise. Uh, they, of course, were freed from Russia at the very start. And actually, oof. They're about to get absorbed by Russia. Kind of glad I caught that when I did, because uh, this is our goodbye to Perm. They enjoyed Russia's help and protection for about 150 years. That protection is now over, and Russia now wants their territory including the city of Perm itself. 15 development, certainly not bad. Good addition to the Russian Empire. 
find it funny that Gazakumuk's still around. Uh, they are allied with Kandar and guaranteed by Circassia. It really just seems like Persia doesn't want to conquer north of the Caucasus. I mean, fair choice by them. The Emperor is dead. Long live the Emperor, Joseph I. And yes, we do see Brandenburg forming Prussia. That's awesome. I'm I'm happy to have seen that in this game. Uh, perhaps Konigsberg was the last province that they needed to do that. Or maybe they just needed an admin tech or something. Uh, what admin tech are they on? Ah, oh, they're on tech 15. Guessing they just needed uh, Konigsberg. Still, we do see Prussia. We have official space marines now. And uh, we have the electors in Prussia. Supporting Haino. I wonder how Haino was set free again. Uh, they are only in Namur, and actually it's Nevers that has done well for itself up here. Their initial province, or usual province, in Nevers lost to Austria, but they hold on to Rethel, Rethel being one of their initial provinces as well, and they've taken Haino and, uh, goodbye Luxembourg. So, uh, perhaps that's what happened over here. Brabant is at war with Holland. I'm sure they'd love to be able to form the Netherlands. Brabant at war with Holland, Great Britain, Newfoundland, and Cuba. Okay, so somebody has gotten down into the Caribbean. That'd be the Dutch conquest of Vlaanderen. So, it is Holland initiating this war, calling in some heavy hitters. I mean, these are all still Dutch states down here, so I don't think we'll have the, you know, low countries revolts type thing. But maybe the Netherlands are formed. Regardless, it appears that it is Spain. No. Um. Uh, okay, then. It is Great Britain that has colonized the Caribbean and still named it Cuba. That seems rather Spanish to me, but hey. Whatever. <laughs> I do see Zhu having taken over pretty much all of the Mayan lands, though Keisha... One of the other Mayan states has just migrated west and a little bit to the north, I suppose. Uh, taking over what is normally Mishtek and Zapotec. And they are... Uh, they do have both Kalima and Tarascon as vassals. So... Considering how they've lost all of their initial lands to Zhu, they're doing quite well. Though they're now losing a war to Totonac? Kalima and Tarascon probably not happy with their overlord. 100% liberty desire for both of them. Can't keep those tags down. Is this Brittany? You bet your bottom dollar it is. Brittany attempting to colonize the Rio Grande region. That would actually be the southern tip of modern Texas. Right next to the Rio Grande. So uh, good for them. A little bit of a late colonizer, but a colonizer nonetheless. We do have Creek having conquered a couple provinces. Chickasaw, formerly pretty big over here, not so anymore. They've lost some to Creek, they've lost one to Caddo, and uh, that's happened. The British are finally in contact with some of the tribes over here. They do share a border between Algonquin and Kichisipi. And uh, we'll, we'll see if they decide to do some conquering of the natives over here. Huron's Federation gone. They're only allied with Sioux. And uh, as Iroquois is gone as well, so maybe the Age of Federations is gone over here. Regardless... Okay. Yeah, so... Great Britain's army, with a Cromwell no less, actually standing in Norway's province over here, Norway is allied with Great Britain. You'd think that uh, Great Britain would not be happy with Norway colonizing in their area over here. Uh, I mean, even taking... Eshemens is a decent province, but it's Satakona that's the, uh, the estuary. Regardless, that's cutting off the different portions of Newfoundland over here. Uh, I guess they're lucky they're both Protestant, because otherwise the Treaty of Tordesius would be in play. Charca has continued to expand down here in South America, though we do see Spain colonizing the La Plata region. 
So uh, Chark had better work fast if they want to form Inca. I don't think they're going to be able to. They just haven't done this fast enough. That would be the timer. Before I leave, it does appear that Ashikaga has formed Japan and annexed Wesugi, so good for them. They do have about 50,000 guys. Uh, are they a great power? They're not. Institutions are <clears throat> fun. Alright, well, we'll come back to this next time. Thank you all for watching. I've been Paragon Saber. Have a good one.